we spoke before I came here. We're at a nice little playground here in Flint, and um, your daughter kind of became a national sensation uh, when the media was actually focusing on Flint. Mm -hmm. She wrote President Obama uh, a letter inviting him to Flint, and he came. And there's a whole beautiful picture of them hugging, and uh, she's Miss Flint, correct me if I'm wrong? Uh, little Miss Flint. Uh, but as we were talking, there's uh, more to the story, and uh, your family's been through a lot. Uh, so I wanted to start with kind of telling the audience uh, a little bit about your family as well as uh, what you, what particularly your children have been suffering with due to the, the lead uh, contamination and poisoning. Okay, um, well, everybody knows my daughter is Little Miss Flint, but we have been dealing with this water issue since the very beginning. When the water was first switched, my youngest was a year and a half, maybe closer to two. And I just want to tell the audience, uh, you're talking about when it was switched. It was uh, originally you were getting Detroit water. Detroit water. And then when it was switched to the river water, we knew the change almost immediately. My youngest daughter broke out in a rash so bad that she had to have steroids, a steroid ointment on her, and be wrapped in plastic wrap probably 12 hours out of the day until it cleared up. And we never figured out, we didn't put two and two together about the water causing it until back when they started doing the rash study back this year. Um, when they switched back from the Detroit water back to, the, or from the Flint River water back to the Detroit water, we started having a lot of issues. Um, we started getting chemical burns, um, rashes that were so bad, it caused tons of pain. Nothing was working to clear them up. I had them, my daughter, my mom, my son, my entire family dealt with this. And if How soon after was this uh, when the water got switched? I think that was in 2014, correct me if I'm wrong? Yeah. Well, the first set of rashes was back in 2014. So my youngest had the rashes where she had to have the saran wrap wrapped around her probably by spring of 2014. Um, then the water kind of evened itself out and we didn't have as many issues with it. Then we started having more rash issues when we went from the Flint River back to the Detroit water. And we figured that part of that would come from them retreating the Detroit water as in adding more chemicals and trying to get the pipes recoded and trying to fix some of the damage that had been done with all the pipes eaten away. Um, just so the audience knows, it's the a big part of the problem was when they when they switched the water, uh, they didn't account for switching water would corrode the pipes even further, causing the lead. Yeah, they weren't putting the anti corrosives in the water. They didn't even have the machines or the tools at the fact at the water plant to even put the cor anti corrosives in. So they just eh, we'll save. I think it was twenty dollars a day, and end up they ended up poisoning the entire city. Um, we didn't know we had lead levels in our house until we had our water tested right before the president came. They pulled water out of our hot water heater and our lead level was 27, which is almost twice of what the legal limit is. Um, so my kids were exposed to lead. We were still cooking with the water. We were still bathing with it. We were still making Kool-Aid and tea and we were still using the water quite regularly. Um, my son has autism. He's had autism since before all of this mess, but his temper has gotten worse. He can't focus on anything. He has issues with his speech. He has issues focusing. Um, Mari is Little Miss Flint, everybody knows. She has some learning difficulties. She has some attention issues. Memory loss is very, very common with her. You could tell her to do something and two minutes later, she can't even recall what you told her to do. Um, Let's move, let's move back to your son. Uh, he also is having behavioral issues, which you yeah. told me. I mean, if we're being honest, we met here instead of your house because he, not that he's, you know, off the wall, but... Uh, he's not off the wall, he, but he doesn't do well with a lot of outsiders coming in. He's either the sweetest kid in the world or he's like Hulk mode, monster, crazy. He, he has his moments. And you said that uh, he instead of getting better, he's gotten worse. Did you see some progress in him before, uh, you know, the, the lead contamination? Yeah, he was going to an autism center, so we were seeing some progress. I mean, he has made a lot of progress with his speech, but there's other areas where he has not made progress with his behavior, um, his focus. There's a lot that was starting to improve, and now it's not. Mm -hmm. And um, 
with uh, autism and behavioral problems, uh, in the past, it's been said that uh, high crime areas were linked to lead, and once they fixed the lead, crime, crime went, went down. down. Yep. So uh, your your thought is that his behavioral issues kind of increased with the lead exposure? I, yes, his behavioral problems have increased with the lead issues, and we have been seeing that across the board with kids. Um, family, friends are having the same issues. Kids are going from straight A's to failing, getting kicked out, having behavioral issues, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, your daughter, Miss Flint, uh, you were talking the memory loss, uh, you know, some a little learning difficulties. Did you, were you seeing those things before the lead contamination? No, um, she had a few issues with math, but nothing to the point of what she's having now. Um, and she's always been a good, smart kid, so we weren't having the issues before, but we are having them now. Now, uh, what changed in terms of math? You know, because, for example, when I was younger, I was terrible at math, so there's not getting it right away and then not even being able to comprehend it has she has is she uh, getting significantly worse in terms of that subject yeah um her comprehension is not there um most kids get their math facts quite down really well and she's forgotten a lot of her basic math facts um and is trying to relearn even just the basics mm -hmm. and to move on to where she's going to be doing fractions and such i'm worried about her but the school kind of has a lot of extra help there for them. So I think she'll be okay in the long run. Do you feel like uh, sometimes uh, you have a hard time remembering some stuff? Yes, I do that often, quite as much often. I forget what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, mom thinks it's uh, developed more recently. And uh, are you excited to go back to school? School starts soon? The sixth. <laughs> uh, what's your uh, what's your favorite subject? Science. I heard uh, you might not like math as much. How do you know? I know a lot about you. I don't. Well, I know how to do math, but not my. I don't know some of my multiplication facts or my division facts, which I don't even know division. You uh you find it kind of challenging to, to learn math? Mm-hmm. How much do you know about uh, what happened here in Flint with the lead? Do you know do you know a lot about it, or you kind of uh, leave it to the adults? Leave it to Mama. <laughs> I have heard stories of people having to replace their hot water heaters, um, issues with plumbing, um, the plumbing to toilets being ate out. Um, our house, we have had issues with our shower, we've had issues with stuff starting leaking, pipes starting to leak and we don't know why. Um, where we are at with the water. Um, at this point, there was 33 pipes changed before the president came on May 4th. Nothing was done all summer. The 31st of August, they started the second part of the fast, fast start program and they televised they had three that they were starting that day um they're supposed to get 250 done no idea when or how fast they'll get them done they have the money there to do i think a couple thousand though and we should say that sudden the 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 changing of the pipes was not happening and suddenly president obama comes down and 33 magically were changed the fast start program they started back in february so the president didn't come until May 4th, but... Can you explain the Fast Track program? The Fast Start program was the mayor's way of starting to get the tainted lead service lines out and try to fix some of the problems. Um, one third of those 33 pipes that they took out didn't need to be changed. Are they, when they're changing the pipes, are they making sure that that anti-corrosive treatment that wasn't in there to begin with is in there? Uh, what's the measures being taken? But we know they're dumping extra chemicals into the already treated Detroit water. Um, we know that because of the way that the water is causing us so many issues. Um, Flint water, you turn it on, you let it run, it smells like you're getting into a recently shocked swimming pool. It's terrible. You get headaches. Um, we've had people with getting red eyes, nausea. There's been so many issues with the water now with all that they're adding to it. But that's because we're closer to the plant. On the other hand, there's people who live further from the plant who have no residual chlorine in their water at all. Their water Ex explain that to the audience. There's a water plant. Yeah, there's so a water plant. 
And as you know, the closer you are to the water plant, the more chlorine you're going to get and the more chemicals. Um, the way that our water system is set up, it used to take care of 200,000 people. We're under 100,000 people in the city now. There's a lot of houses that are abandoned. The water is just not being used as much as it was before. So with the water not being used as much before, the chemicals aren't getting spread out in the system. And you'll have houses that are, say, 15 miles from the water plant. That's water's coming out brown, and they have no chlorine in the water at all. So it's a lot of where you are in the city of what kind of issues you're having now where the water is. There's still a lot of people with very high lead levels. Um, the TTHMs, there was just some notices that went out about those a couple weeks ago. So talk to me about this fast track program, which doesn't seem so fast. Uh, it seems to be when I was in Indiana covering another lake crisis, this seems, you know, between the EPA, the local government, it's like one hand doesn't know what the other one's doing and it's just bureaucratic incompetence run amok. Uh, is the federal government still the EPA down here? Uh, what's the city government doing? What's Rick Snyder doing? Um, the EPA. I do not know that they are have as much of a presence in the city as they did before. I mean, when this first broke, they had their mobile station set up, and you knew they were here. They were here testing. Um, I think they've kind of given it over to the Michigan, to the state, to try to let them handle as far as testing goes. I know the governor has a list of houses that they test every month to try to that they use for their base numbers on, oh, the lead levels are dropping here, the lead levels are dropping there. That's all well and fine, but you have houses that have never had their water tested before at all, several houses. And it doesn't seem like the lead levels are dropping enough to make the water drinkable. No, the water is not drinkable unless you have a filter attached to it. Um, they tried to say that it was safe for toddlers, pregnant women, babies, but the medical society quick jumped in and said, no, it's not, don't stop using bottled water. Um, it seems like people are getting tired and getting fed up, and you don't see people as quick to want to get bottled water anymore. Um, we've seen where we were handing out water with one of Mari's pageant friends, and we're like, okay, we have supplies and water, and nobody wanted to take any water. Um, Why is that? I don't know if it's that people have it stocked up or people are actually believing that you can use the tap water. Um, I couldn't tell you. I know there's still people out there that don't even have a filter on their tap and can't get to bottled water. So something that you would think would be readily available in a disaster zone isn't so readily available. Because uh, when we were walking over here, I told you I had brought a lot of water for people. And you mentioned, oh, everybody thinks that's all we need. Talk about what else is needed here. Um, well, bottled water is all well and good, and to outsiders, like, oh, yay, we helped Flint, we sent so much water. That's all well and good, but when you have to live on bottled water for everything, you get frustrated. Um, I wish people would focus on keeping Flint relevant, keeping Flint out there so the pressure is there on our governor and the pressure is there on our mayor and everybody in charge to get it together and get it taken care of faster rather than this little slow start program that they have going. I know it takes time. I know they have to get contracts situated. It's just frustrating to know that that money's been sitting there for months and it hasn't been used at all. Well, it seems to me, uh, reading the news lately, the governor seems more interested in getting public funds to pay for his legal defense and all the lawyers, because of all the cases, I see a lot more focus on that rather than relief. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, the governor and, you know, all the money he's trying to use from public funds to pay for the legal uh, bills? I think it is crazy that they're using state money to pay for his legal defense. He messed up. We know he messed up. Why are we paying for his defense? Because he messed up. Uh, do, you, do you think that somebody who, unintentional or not, I mean... Uh, incompetence caused the problem. T does the community here, what are their thoughts on their government and the governor? Well, you ask anybody in Flint, the broad answer you will get is Governor Snyder should be in jail. Um, there have been quite a few indictments. People are not happy with those indictments. But I know from working with the eternal, Attorney General's people that it takes time. You have to start with the little guy and get all your evidence before you can go. You can't just go say, oh, we're arresting the governor. He's guilty. Throw him under the jail. It don't work like that. 
Um, there was a petition to try to get him recalled. I have not heard if that went through or not or how many signatures they were able to achieve. It's very hard to recall a governor in Michigan. He changed the law to make it very hard to get him recalled. Really? Very, very hard. Um, Tell me about that. What, what law did he change? Um, there was a law that you had so many days to get your amount of signatures that you needed for a petition. Um, he changed the law to where it was, I think you had 180 days to down to maybe like 90. So you don't have the amount of time to get the amount of signatures that you need. Um, it's very specific on how you get it. Say somebody accidentally lives in a different city, signs it, that voids all the signatures on one sheet. He makes it very, very, very hard to get any type of petition actually through. And talk to me about uh, the other uses of the water. Uh, can people shower without issues? Are you still getting rashes? Um, what, but for you personally, but people you know, uh, other than the drinking the actual water, ha are there still issues? Um, yes, there are still kids getting rashes. Um, our family cannot shower or bathe in this water without a filter on it. It took us a few tries to get a filter that actually helps, and I'm hoping that this filter we have lasts a little bit longer than the last filter that they tried to hand out. Um, they're trying, but like I said before, Flint water is so variable from street to street. You might have one issue on one street that you don't have on the next street. Like we have elevated levels, levels of chlorine. Our family happens to be very, very sensitive to the higher levels of chlorine. So we're going to have more issues than maybe somebody across town who's not so close to the plant. Let's talk about the racial element, because from what I see, all these lead crises and contamination seem to only be happening in low income areas with black people. Um, I think if this would have happened, let's say Upper East Side, Manhattan, it's possible the National Guard would have been brought in. Uh, do you guys basically think you've just been forgotten about? We're we're the poor little community who can't help ourselves, so we don't get the National Guard, we don't get the Army Corps engineers in to come help us. Which I was hoping that that's what the president would do. I was hoping that we come in and be like, hey, I see you're struggling to get this started on your own. Let's bring in some help to help get some of these up. I didn't say they had to come in and replace the whole system, but help Flint get to a point where they can help themselves. Right now, it's clear that this is too big of a project for us to handle on a local level. It doesn't seem like the state knows how to handle it either. So we need help higher than what we're getting. Well, that was my next question with President Obama. I mean, uh, obviously he's African-American. A lot of people feel like he's kind of shied away from embracing the fact that, you know, he's an African-American president, the first. Um, do you think he has marshaled the resources of the federal government uh, in a satisfactory way to you to, to help the situation? He has helped out quite a bit with getting the water pods open, but the federal state of emergency... Talk to me about the water pods. What do you mean? Um, the water pods are point and distribution sites. That's where you can go to get your filters, your filter replacements, and bottles of water. There is one in each ward, so there's eight in the entire city. They're open every day. You pull up, tell them how much water you need, if you need filter replacements, and they load it up in your car for you, and you get to go home and haul water in the house. Um, they were helping to fund those up until, I want to say a couple weeks ago, when the federal state of emergency ran out. Um, when the federal state of emergency ran out, a lot of people panicked, thinking that Flint was going to run out of water. The last I heard, we were 50-something days from running out of funding because the state under-budgeted for the Flint water crisis. I think it's around $150,000 a day that they're paying out on water and supplies and all of that. Bottled water? Yeah, bottled water, filters, all of the replacements, all of the manpower. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a big, big undertaking to supply an entire city with water. And uh, Have you seen, obviously, you've got young kids, so you know other families. Uh, what have you seen from other families? Are they having a lot of issues with their children as well? Yeah, um, a lot of other families are having the same issues, same skin issues, kids not having the attention or the focus they used to have, temper starting to come into play. Um, Flint is a place where a lot of kids here didn't already have a good start. It's not like, oh, you have kids in a upper class area where there's a lot of resources. There's not a lot of resources here in Flint. Flint schools kind of suck. And I don't say that in a mean way. It's just that there's 15,000 kids 
in the district from K to 12 and only 5,000 are in the Flint Community Schools. So it's a district that there's a lot of kids here, but they're not all attending school here. And uh, are, is Flint somewhere with a lot of uh, broken homes, single mothers, or uh, are most families two-parent families? You see a lot of single-parent homes. Um, the level of incarceration here is high. There's issues with drugs, poverty, violence. Um, there's a lot of those problems. Flint is a very impoverished community. And it didn't used to be that way. It's kind of a, another one of these cities that decades ago was blue collar, a lot of manufacturing jobs, middle class, and then with union. GM pulled out. Say that again? I said when GM pulled out, GM kind of took the strength out of Flint. Flint has still been trying to rebound from losing all those shop jobs that we lost when GM and Delphi pulled out. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, 1980s? In the 80s, yep. So overall, you know, what, I, what I'm hoping that the viewers get is this is still a crisis. Oh, this is very much still a crisis. Um, regardless of what you see coming from a parent here in Flint, we're still struggling. We're having the same issues we were having last year, same issues we were having two years ago. Nothing has changed for us here. And you said certain houses are being rechecked for lead while others aren't? Well, there's a lot of people that don't want their water tested. I don't know if that people are scared or they just don't want to know. I don't know what it is, but there is, you can still get your water tested, but finding a place to drop off your water sample to get it tested is not as easy anymore. You used to be able to drop it off at the water department. You can't do that no more. How come? They stopped taking um, water samples and there was a group that had protested on their steps back in the very end of winter and they I guess they didn't like it and they stopped taking water samples there. And let, let's talk about politics for a second. Uh, obviously Hillary Clinton came down there here uh, before the Michigan primary. I don't believe Donald Trump ever did. Uh, Bernie Sanders. Uh, you haven't seen many presidential candidates down here recently have you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the only time Flint has been mentioned by Donald Trump was during the water or during their debate in Detroit and all we got out of him was oh it's horrible what's happening in Flint that's it we didn't get no support he never came to give even a photo op of him handing out a bottle of water like we got nothing from him it's like oh wow the city messed up too bad um Hillary Clinton has said she's extending her hand and helping um our mayor says that she's in constant contact with her I'm not 100 percent convinced on that um, what does it matter if she's in contact with him? What it, you know, what it doesn't sound like she's actually concretely uh, yeah, done much. Her foundation helped start some jobs for kids here or something. Mm -hmm. That's the extent of her help for us. So needless to say, uh, you're not banking on whoever becomes president uh, making this a priority. Um, I highly doubt it's a priority because Flint is unique in the point that this was hap this happened because we were under an emergency manager. Um. Flint is not unique. There are millions of or thousands of Flints all across the United States that have the exact same infrastructure issues. Um, only reason Flint got so much attention is because we were under emergency manager law. We weren't in charge of the decisions being made for us. The state was. The state run by a Republican governor who fucked up royally. Oh, royally fucked up. Like, royally fucked up. And he, he, he's trying, but I think people would be happy to see him resign. I was going to ask, how often is Rick Snyder down here in Flint? Um, the lieutenant governor is down here three to four days out of the week. Um, the what about the governor governor? The governor governor, um, he sneaks into town. When he comes into town, you never know he's coming beforehand. And you can never get that close to him when he comes. He sneaks in, and you'll see on the news, oh, the governor was here today. The governor was here today. Um, he has not been here most recently, though. I haven't heard much from him. What's he doing when he's down here? Get a photo up at McDonald's and leave? I mean, what's he doing? Um, well, there for a while he was, before he took off on his little overseas trip, he had came down to one of the bars downtown who has nice new plumbing and was getting gallons of water to show that he's drinking Flint water. It's safe for him to drink. Why don't you all drink it? Um, when we were at the state capitol after the president was here and walked in his office, we, he still he, he had his Flint water sitting on the desk there. If he's really was drinking it, who knows? But as you said before, the medical community has said it's still not safe it's to drink. It's still not safe to drink, unless it's filtered, and even with it filtered, I still don't trust it. I will never trust the water here. So let me ask you, uh, finally, 
if, if you could, economically, would you leave? We could if we wanted to. But the thing is, I have faith in Flint. Flint is a town that's been beaten, that has been screwed time and time again, and somehow Flint always tends to bounce back. Um, the community here is unlike any other. The support we have for each other is unlike any other. Um, and I have faith in Flint. I'm not to the point where I'm ready to leave yet.